This is the world map that we are used to, where Russia and USA seems very far, but actually they are closer than you think. In fact, Alaska and Siberia are only separated by an 80 km straight. Over the years, many plans have been put in place to build a bridge across the Bering Strait, and in recent years, a tunnel across the strait, linking the United States with Russia. This is a story that goes back to the 19th century with many unapproved designs. This easily could be the most difficult project ever attempted in human history. While in theory, the distance across the Bering Strait does not seem like a big engineering challenge. We have built far longer bridges and tunnels in the past. The issue is with the harsh and unpredictable weather conditions. The area experiences extremely low temperatures high winds and ice flows that could potentially damage or even destroy a bridge. There are many questions surrounding this project such as how can you construct something in an area that is so isolated that it will be difficult to transport materials and equipment to this area and even working. There is also questions surrounding the design of the crossing. Which is the best option, a bridge or a tunnel? And what purpose is going to solve? And will it eventually improve the global transport route and increase mining in the region? Because of that, this project has been in planning for over a century now. Hi, my name is Joseph and you're watching The Young Hero Engineer and today we are going to take a closer look at the most impossible construction project to ever be attempted, the Bering Strait Crossing. The Bering Strait is a narrow passage of water that separates the eastmost point of Russia from the westmost point of USA Alaska. The strait connects the Pacific and Arctic Oceans and it is usually covered in ice for most of the year with thickness up to 1.8 meters. The Bering Strait is approximately 82 kilometers wide at its narrowest point and its depth varies from 10 to 50 meters. There are two islands across the strait, Little Diomede owned by the US and Big Diomede owned by Russia, separated by only 3.8 kilometers. Alaska belonged to Russia until 1867, when the US purchased the land for 7.2 million to become the 49th American state. And with that, the idea was born of a Bering Strait crossing between those two countries. The first plan of an overland crossing was put in 1890 by William Gilbin, the first governor of the Colorado Territory, who envisioned a series of railways linking the entire world. However, the first design proposal was put together in 1892 by Joseph Strauss, the engineer behind the Golden Gate Bridge and other 400 bridges. The proposal was Joseph's senior college thesis and it is before he became the most famous American engineer ever known. Unfortunately, his proposal got rejected by the Russian Empire. The idea gained a lot of attraction in the early 20th century, when large amounts of gold, oil and minerals were discovered in Siberia. In 1904, a tunnel under the Bering Strait was proposed by a syndicate of American railroad investors with 5,000 kilometers of railroads on the Russian side and 3,000 on the American side. But this proposal came with a 90-year lease of exclusive mineral rights for 13 kilometers on each side of the rail and came at a cost of 65 million for the tunnel and 300 million including all the railroads. This was heavily debated as it would only benefit a small number of people and was fully rejected in 1907 in the wake of the First World War. In 1958, a Bering Strait bridge was suggested by the engineer T.Y. Lin, who was one of the most respected civil engineers at that time. T.Y. Lin bridge design had three levels, the top level for cars, the middle for high-speed rail, and the third for pipes to transport oil and natural gas. The design is a viaduct with the state cables 
Since the bearing shred is only 50 meters deep at its lowest point, Lin's design allowed for 220 piers to be constructed over the shred. The piers were as high as 40 story buildings to allow for large cargo ships to pass underneath. This bridge relied on state cables and post tensioned steel tendons across the bridge spans to carry the bridge. The bridge will also have conically shaped piers to disperse the flows running across the strait, which could produce an impact force of 44 meganewtons, similar to a large ship colliding with the piers. This project was proposed to foster commerce and collaboration between the two nations and was given the name the Intercontinental Peace Bridge. T. Allen did feasibility studies on the cost of the bridge, which he determined would cost 1 billion, but in 1994, he updated the cost to more than 4 billion. However, in 2007, the costs were updated again to 105 billion. This included the entire highway, the electrified double track high speed rail, and the pipelines. Unfortunately, Two Islands' design was not adopted. Although his design was so detailed, it still carries so many uncertainties, especially since we have never built such a massive project in such extreme conditions. Recently, in 2014, a Chinese transport company proposed a 10,000 km high speed rail line from northeast China to the US. This will include a tunnel under the Bering Strait linking the US, Canada, Russia and China using a 350 km an hour bullet train with a 200 km undersea tunnel that bypassed the remote area in Alaska and Siberia. If this tunnel would be constructed, it would become the longest tunnel in the world and would allow passengers to travel between China and US in only two days. Due to the harsh environment, building a tunnel under the Bering Strait seems the most cost-effective. However, there is no evidence to back up this claim. When building a crossing, you have to consider the most cost-effective solution, but also you need to consider a solution that has the least environmental impact to the area while not compromising on functionality. There isn't really any accurate cost to this project. The issue is not only constructing a bridge or a tunnel across the Bering Strait, but also building the infrastructure that connects to the crossing. The nearest major connection highway on the Russian side is the M56, which is currently unpaved and around 2,000 kilometers away from the strait. On the US side, an estimated 1,200 kilometers of highways would have to be built to the Bering Strait. The most accurate proposal for this project was in 2007 when an intercontinental link tunnel was proposed between the US and Russia across the Bering Strait and would cost between 10 to 12 billion while the entire project will cost around 65 billion. This is significantly cheaper than a bridge. This will be a railway tunnel that will transport passengers, oil and gas. But when it comes to building a bridge across the strait, there are some potential cost-effective solutions that can be explored. The straight distance between Siberia and Alaska is 82.5 kilometers. If building a bridge and using the Diomede Islands, the straight distance over water will be three parts, a 36 kilometers, a 3.8 kilometers, and 36.8 kilometers, which could be a cheap alternative to explore. The biggest benefit to this project is transportation of oil, minerals, and natural gas, which both Alaska and Siberia are rich of and building a high-speed rail between those two countries will make it easy to transport those minerals and will be highly profitable to US and Russia and even China if they end up doing that project. Yet given the extreme condition and the list of unknowns, this is easily one of the most complicated engineering problems in the 21st century. Constructing a big mega project at such a scale has never been done before, which will require a lot of engineering and planning to make this project a reality. The cost would easily be double what it was estimated and would take way longer than the longest bridge or tunnel that was ever built. Most likely, construction works will only be limited to five months. 
between May and September. Ice usually forms around October, which will make it difficult to construct a bridge and even difficult for a tunnel construction due to the extreme cold and dark winters. Based on that, it is estimated that this project will take 15 years to complete. There is also political issues that have to be solved for this project to happen, such as border security and funding for this project. This project has been in planning for over a century now, due to the sheer complexity of it. But in some situations, specifically for this project, maybe some things are better be left alone. Any construction project will bring a form of disruption to the wildlife and the indigenous people of the land. Although the region is one of the very poorest, the land is rich in oil and gold. There are doubts about the returns on the investment for this project. Would the amount of traffic through such a tunnel generate enough revenue to repay for the construction? Will it be more cost effective than shipping cargo through the Pacific Ocean? There is always an inspiration behind every mega project. But the truth is, we will never know exactly how successful a project is until it is operational. But for now, the Bering Strait remains as is. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the Young Hero Engineer for more videos. I will see you in the next one. Cheers!